chat. Also, we will have uh, time for your questions at the end. So hold on to those. And at the end, we will make sure that we answer as many as we possibly can. Thanks, Vernon. All right, let's jump right in, Lennon. Let's jump in. Let's jump in. And um, basically what today is about is what you see on your screen right now, closing more deals in 2020. And it starts today. And how do we do this? And basically on a, on a daily basis, I coach teams big and small, and I see the same common issues. Here are my leads, an abundance of leads, but I'm not doing anything with them. Some of them are, are old. Some of them have never been touched. Where do I begin? So today we wanna to share some ideas that we see work so you can really start to separate those diamonds that are in the weeds and filter the noise to really find those valuable gems. So to get started, I wanted to tell you guys all a quick story about a client of mine. And this client earlier this year was just simply overwhelmed. They had this large database of leads, thousands of leads, and nothing was really happening with any of them. And to make matters worse, this client was paying a boatload of money on lead generation. So now this list is just getting bigger and bigger, and we both knew that money was just simply going out the door. So the story ends with this client of mine having really the biggest year in sales so far. And this was accomplished by applying a manageable structure and workflow to her database that allowed her to convert new leads and really pull the diamonds out in the database. Awesome. So we want to learn more about these diamonds today and some of that structure and workflow that was applied that allowed her to convert more leads. But before we do, I've got a quick poll for you guys. and We want to hear from you. So you'll see a poll here on the screen. Go ahead and choose the answer that you think applies best. What do you think are the prospects that are currently in your database or in one of your spreadsheets that are most likely to turn into more closings? Go ahead and fill out the poll there. Do you think it's your past clients? Those are the diamonds in your database? Or maybe the diamonds are paid leads? Interesting how past stale leads. clients are taking a huge lead here. Um, definitely the majority of the votes are past clients. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, that's good, good, good answers. Got a few more votes coming in here. So stale leads, not yet converted. Paid leads from your website or past clients. What are the most valuable? Where are those diamonds? All right, let's go ahead and end the poll here and share the results so we can all see what the, oh wow, past clients looks like that one by quite a bit. Past clients, interesting. That's awesome, great guys, thank you for your feedback. Um, the real answer here is all of the above, all of these three categories, and this is what we're going to focus on today, these three categories. So let's start off with these past clients, Lennon. Yeah, so when it starts with past clients, kind of the first one of our three categories, it's really, important. It's important to keep your relationship growing with all your past clients, as we all know, right? Um, a few ways that you can continue building your relationships with past clients and showing and allowing basically new, new deals to surface, starting with events. Events and a great example of another event that are event that I've seen in work in the past is a past client of mine said that they wanted to come up with ways to really not have to spend a lot of money on the events. They knew the value, they knew the importance, um, but they also know that happy hours and parties are great, but they cost money, right? So my clients started to do a little bit of volunteer work and inviting all their clients to the work that they were volunteering for. A great example, um, she started to basically volunteer at a homeless shelter. Thanksgiving is coming up. Great idea is to maybe send out an email to all your past clients. Um, suggesting the idea to meet you at the homeless shelter, shelter and help basically serve Thanksgiving um, meals. And this is a great way to just send out an email, an email um, basically that they have the ability to read. And then as you send out this email, see how many people show up. You may get one or two people, but basically you're only building that opportunity for more and more people to touch base with you. Another great idea is personal touches, maybe birthdays, anniversaries, et cetera, right? Are you keeping in touch on a personal level of your past clients at least, at least three times a year with maybe a personal text? How are your kids? How's the neighborhood? How's the house that we got you in a year ago? Are you sending those personal notes? And really this is made very simple inside a follow-up boss with the ability to schedule your emails so you don't have to remember when to send out a happy birthday or anniversary. Let the system do the work for you. 
So moving forward, we want to hear a little bit of your ideas. Um, we're asking another question of you guys. You'll see in your Zoom, in the Q&A section, what are some of your ideas? What are some of the past events that you have had in the past? Feel free, take the time to go into our Q&A and type in some of the past events so we can share them with the entire team. Kind of another yeah, it's example. Really great to hear ideas from other people. It is a great yeah. idea. That's awesome, Vernon. That's an awesome idea. Helping uh, get get some gloves and mittens ready for people, especially as we go into the the cold season. Client parties, yeah, pool parties are great. And make sure you jot down any of these ideas because it can be hard, you know, as you guys get busier and busier to uh, to come up with ideas on your own. So it's always great to uh, collaborate with others. I see a great idea of a client appreciation dinner in December. Fall festival, that's a fun one. Happy hour is always a good one. Donations for kids at Christmas, great idea. Barbecues, that's a good one. Uh, everybody likes eating food. Holiday uh, gift drive and giveaway for children, a really great one. Community Blood, drive, yep. Blood drives, animal shelters, toys for tots, back to school drives, all of these are just really, really great ideas. Um, and, and you'll notice these yeah. are very cost effective as well, which is, which is, which is, which is important. Yeah, so you don't have to spend a lot of money to have an, a successful event. A lot of these can be really affordable um, and also community things. Great, guys. Thanks so much for your feedback. Let's jump into that next category, which is our, those newer leads, paid leads. Which one should you be working? And we all know that these online leads that we're paying money for are a bit of a different animal than, than uh, our sphere and our past clients. As we all know, the real secret to success with these is speed to lead. We want to make sure that we're getting to those leads before any other agent. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that you have an action plan set up in Fault Boss so that way you're engaging those automatically. Previously, Lyndon and I hosted a webinar titled Conquer the First Phone Call. And if you're currently paying for any online leads, whether it's be Zillow or you're driving traffic to your website and you haven't watched this webinar yet, I strongly recommend you do so. We'll go ahead and send out an email after the session today with a link to that. So make sure that you watch the webinar. It's a really great phone script for how to start that first phone conversation when you get on a, a call with a new lead and how you can start building a successful relationship with them and convert it into business. So we'll be sure to send that out. So keep an eye out for an email today after this session. But let's hop back into today's topic a little bit more. You know, these online leads that you think might not be worth working if uh, maybe they're a bit older, maybe you, you missed that opportunity on the first uh, you know, week, you didn't connect with them. What are some things that you can do to pull those out and engage or re-engage those leads that you haven't yet converted? So I'm going to hop into Fall Boss and show a few quick tips to help you do that. And a real simple thing is we can create a list around the leads, people that are still in the stage lead, so we haven't converted them or updated their timeline yet, and, and ones that are uh, less than 30 days old. So they're still fairly new, but we haven't converted them. So I've got a list of 13 people right now in my database. If you're not quite sure how to set up these filters and create a list, be sure to check out our help docs for filters and smart lists. We'll also send out instructions on that. But I'm just gonna hop into my list here and if I click on the first person, a really powerful way to re-engage these people is to use a text template. So I've got one here that's new leads never engaged. And I'm just sending out a quick text saying, uh, have you seen any properties you'd like to go take a look at? So just starting off a conversation, they're probably still searching for a home and haven't landed on one yet, or maybe I'll find out that they've already found one and I can take them off my list. But I'm gonna go ahead and send this text off and then I can click this next arrow, send that same template to the next person on my list. So you see how quickly and easily I can pull out these people that are still in my database that I missed that speed to action with, but I can still engage them and uh, hopefully pull these up and convert them into a deal. Also, if you haven't already done so, make sure that you have an action plan going for any of your online leads. That way new leads that come through are no longer slipping through and they're automatically getting engaged. That way you're going to convert more of these brand new leads. So Lyndon, apart from um, engaging these older leads and sending off a text message, uh, as well as going through and calling these guys, calling the leads that are older than 30 days, what can we do for the leads that are a little bit older than that? Yeah, so the old leads, um, Basically, well, what I want to do too is I've also actually seen there's been some great new ideas come in since you were last speaking, Josh. I just wanted to go down this list of events, not to get off subject. Um, ice cream social, holiday uh, pickup, girls' night, manicures, 
rent out the movie theater. Um, position. Hey, Lennon, that's oh. one we haven't tried yet is uh, Girls' Night or Manicures. Girls' Night, night Out, exactly. Um, we'll give that a shot, right? I could use <laughs> yeah. um, anyway, great idea. Still coming in, guys. Keep them coming. Um, but anyway, to move back to old leads, these are, these are those leads that we all have, right? Um, those leads that we, we know we need to be working, but more times than not, it's easy to start to give up on them, right? And what are some other clever ways to get those old leads never engaged? What are some fun tricks that some have had in the past? How about a call blitz? A call blitz. Raise your hand right now as you're in your office um, with everyone around if you like to spend hours every single day cold calling. Uh, cold calling is my favorite. Love it. I promise as you say that, Josh, you're the only one who raised your hand. Um, oh, no one else is raising their hand because cold calling is not fun, right? It takes time. It takes practice. It takes repetition. However, if you can master cold calling, there is a ton, a ton of money to be made. Um, so here's a great way. Here's a great way to really make the dreaded cold calling fun. Once again, make it a party, get together with everyone in your office. Early evening hours seem to work best. Bring in food pizza, drinks, whatever, whatever might work. And then everyone starts cold calling, starts calling that, let's start cold calling that old, old list of leads. Get the energy in the room and challenge everyone that the whole goal of the cold calling blitz is to set two appointments on the weekend that were not already booked prior. After those two, two appointments are booked, you're done. It may take you 10 minutes, it may take you two hours, but after you book those two appointments, you're done and you're back at it next week or the next month. Doing a call night, I promise, works. And it's not a lot of time and it can really be made a lot of fun. Another great idea, batch emails. Batch emails give you the opportunity to reach a large audience in a quick amount of time. With that said, it can be kind of difficult to get many responses back from batch emailing. However, within Follow-Up Boss, did you know that you can go to the reporting page and then batch emails and start to see all of your batch emails that are sent out. Then you can start to see who is clicking on the links and see who has opened these emails. This then gives such a great, great workable list to call by basically whoever has opened those emails. Tip though, is to keep your batch emails simple and to the point. I see a lot of batch emails be very drawn out. Um, so great examples. Uh, uh, one would be in the subject line of your email, their name, are you still looking for your dream home? And then in the email, hi, so-and-so, John, Stephen, Mary, have you seen any homes that you would like to go see? Give that actionable item, the actionable item of saying, have you seen any homes you would like to go see? Keep it simple. Another great example is in the subject line, do you like any of these homes? Question mark. In the base of the email, hi, so-and-so, I thought you might want to check out these listings. Let me, like, let me know if you'd like to go see any. Are you still looking to move anytime soon? Create that actionable item for them. Um, and then finally, when it comes to your old leads, clean up that database. It's important to be realistic, right? If the lead will never turn into, close, into a closing, get them out. Get them out of there, right? Don't let that clog up your system. Anyone who basically unsubscribes to your emails, or maybe they have no email, or no phone number, get those, get those old leads out of your system so you're only working ones that are worth your time. Those are some really awesome tips, Lyndon. One that actually just came through that uh, Chris Fullerton mentioned, um, and this I've seen work a lot with a text message or an email as well, is did we break up? And adding something that's humorous. So maybe you've tried to call or text them or email them several times and kind of stepping outside of that normal trying to ask for something or talk about the purchase or the sell of their home, bringing some humor into it could get a response and having a, did we break up in the, uh, the subject is, is a really fun one. Bringing that humor as well as adding that personal touch. You, when you add that personal touch, it gives them, gives them that reason, right? Absolutely. Nobody wants to just talk to a robot, right? Exactly. So let's hop into Q and A, Josh. What do you think? Sounds good. I know you guys have some questions coming through already, a few. Uh, Chris says BioIt has had about a 45% response rate, so that's really awesome. Thanks, Chris, for that feedback. So what questions do you guys have? As, you, as we've gone through our, 
our, our list and tips today. Are there any questions that you guys have, might have? Feel free to type your answers into, into our Q&A and, we, and we'll, we'll go through them for you. Great, some few questions coming through. We'll read them um, and try to get to as many as possible. Always great questions come out of these webinars. And it, maybe you've got a tip kind of like Chris did here. Feel free to type that in here as well. So how can we batch email more than 300 people? That's a great question. So the email limit is based off of your email provider. Um, so if you've got Gmail or a G Suite email, it's gonna be based off that limit. If you wanna raise that limit, we do have an integration with a company called SendGrid, which is just a batch email provider. You'll see that under admin and then integrations. You'll see SendGrid here. You can click over to their website to see more information, uh, but they've got a free plan that allows you to send quite a few emails and they also have a few other tiers. Um, it just basically gives you different packages for raising that email limit for your batch emails. Great question. I see a great question here. How often are you following up with new leads that don't answer the first time around? Um, especially brand new leads, if, you're, if it's online leads or any new leads, is that first seven to 10 days is the most crucial time. That is when we need to be very, very aggressive. The secret to success, as we mentioned earlier, for leads is speed, 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 being the first, the first agent to speak to that lead. But sometimes we're not going to get them on the phone initially. So we want to continue to be very aggressive at least, at least once a day for seven to 10 days um, moving forward. Awesome. Lots of more questions. I've got another question here about how to change that initial automatic response. I'll show you guys that here really quickly. So I think what they're referring to here is you can have an initial text message or email sent out in one of these action plans. So to edit that, you'll just go to admin then action plans. And if I click into the action plan that I want to edit, so in this case, I'm going to edit my Zillow default action plan. You'll see right here that initial text message that sends out. You can just click into here and edit the text. Be sure to keep it short and sweet. This one's really effective. We've done a lot of testing with it. Um, so it does have their name and makes it personal as well as the address they inquired on and a question or a call to action at the end. That's key to making sure that you get a response. You can also edit the steps in this action plan, these emails by just clicking right in here. Great question. I see a great question here from Lewis. If you have a database of 3000 plus contacts, what do you recommend for cleaning up the database? Um, really making this a workable list, really start by creating a list that lasts 30 days. Give yourself something to work off of. That's more of your calling list, if you will, your last 30 days. And then we start building lists on, um, that we can start to batch emailing for that entire, entire database. Um, but basically pulling those three subject lines that we talked about today within those three thousands, making your list breakable from past clients, your old leads, and your online leads, breaking those into, two, into three different subjects for those 3,000 contacts. Awesome, lots more questions coming through here, guys. Really good stuff. I'm uh, just reading a few through more here. We also, by the way, do have a really great video on how to uh, manage your database and make sure that you're making the most out of it. So be sure to check our help docs for that. Just type in database and you'll see some options there as well. Um, somebody was asking to repeat what Chris did in his tip and it was just saying sending an email that's a little more humoristic and uh, they used one in the subject line that said did we break up and they got about a 45 percent response rate from that. I do see a question here I need more detailed information on doing batch emails. Um, we will definitely include more information on batch emails um, in a follow-up email after this call, because it seems to be a, a, a common question. So we will definitely be able to send that out after this call. Great guys, that's about all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, keep an eye out on your email this afternoon for the recording of this webinar, as well as some helpful tips for batch emailing and any questions that we didn't get to today, uh, feel free to email support at Fault Boss or click that little help button on the bottom right of your screen and we'd be happy to help you guys out. Thanks, everybody. Have a great Thanks, day. Everyone, have a great day.